the Lord. The whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. As Jesus is questioned by the scholar of the law, he knew well the response he should receive, this scholar. This testing of Jesus was done in a way to assert himself, to assert what he knew to be right and true. And Jesus, coming forth with this great command, this first and foremost, which followed what any good Israelite would have uh, repeated a number of times a day, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is God alone. Followed with, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. The very core of your strength to be orientated to God. Jesus adding, in the second like it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Taking action that would turn towards the other in such a way that would show a recognition of care for your very own life. Later, we know that Matthew would give the account of Jesus talking about what the end time would be like, what the parable of the judgment in final form would be. Jesus gives us a glimpse of what it might be to love our neighbor. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you cared for me, a prisoner, and you visited me. And the righteous will say to him, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry and feed you, or naked and clothe you, sick and tend to your needs, or in prison and visit you? And he will say, whenever you did this for the least, you did this for me. The very core of our life must be centered on the actions of Jesus Christ or missing it. The very core of every action we take must be informed by Christ or we're missing it. The more and more challenging, the more and more vocal, the more and more violent, the more and more challenging on all levels our socio-political climate can get, the more and more necessary for us to come back to the very basic reality. Christ calls for us, for you and for me, to act on behalf of the very love that propelled him to die for us and for our salvation. As we have been forgiven, 
so we must forgive. As our hunger for knowledge or grace or spirituality is fulfilled in Christ Jesus, so too we must look to the hunger of others, both physical and spiritual. As we, in the sickness of sin, have been healed and tended to by Christ the physician, so we too must extend ourselves in compassion to those who need Christ's healing. Again and again, the challenges of our world are those for us to be met by the presence of Christ. If they're not, we're missing it. Let us pray in this Holy Eucharist tonight that we will respond generously to the grace we have been given and that we will honestly look into ourselves, into our hearts, into our thoughts, into our words, and upon our actions and hold them up to the light of Christ. Do they look like Him? Do I sound like Him? Do I work like Him? Do I love like Him? It is what we're called to be, and it is meant to influence everything we do, how we work, how we act, how we vote, how we pray, how we talk. Every action of ours is to be on behalf of the gospel of Jesus Christ. May it be so to the glory of God the Father that upon his coming we will recognize him who looks at us for because those who looked at our actions saw him first.